Hello, Aries. <laughs> Always have to do the wink with you all. Hi. Welcome to November 2020 and yeah, this very powerful month. This is a month of a lot of stationing direct and I think for Aries, the most obvious thing going on here in November is that Mars, your ruling planet, who has been retrograde since September, is going direct on the 13th. <sighs> That's big. Um, it's been a really personal transit for you all. Uh, this whole year, there's been a huge amount. The second half of 2020 is just one big Mars and Aries party. And for you, that has been a huge revolution. And I think, you know, stationing days are really powerful. And this month is just taking that moment to connect with what has been going on as Mars has moved through your sign, what healing has been coming up. I think there's been some heaviness and some darkness for Aries as Mars has gone retro and gone really deep into what, where you feel you have to have walls up, where you feel you have to be in control, where you feel you aren't allowed to be vulnerable, where you feel you have to be in your warrior mode, and what all of that means for you. And of course, there's post shadow the rest of 2020. Mars is still going to be with you guys the rest of 2020. He's not leaving till early January. Then he'll be moving on. So you're still going to be working through this. But this month, there's a breath, there's a, there is a release of pressure around going deep diving and, and allowing yourself to kind of come back out of your shell into being your full Aries self again, into that forward motion. Uh, Mercury is also going direct this month on the 3rd in Libra, in your opposing sign, also relieving some pressure around learning around relationships, learning around value when it comes to giving and receiving and uh, being in communication and harmony. So these direct motions, I do think, Aries, you're going to really love how that feels. I actually had a message for you too. Um, well, Scorpio season, let's, one other thing. Scorpio season is a time of transformation for Aries. It's a time to shed a skin. Most of this month is Scorpio season, right? Until the 21st, we're doing some really deep work around shedding that skin. So as we kind of close out Mars retrograde and he goes direct and we move through Scorpio season, all that's happening, you are going to be almost like breaking out of your shell. You know, baby birds have to like fight to break out of their shell in order to be like fully healthy birds. If they don't have that chance to kick out of their shell, they actually end up um, like compromised in their adult bird life. It's a very important part and it's a very Aries message to be giving you about breaking out of your shell, like fighting for it. But there's kind of this skin shedding process going on. But as we get into Sag season on the 21st and we start to be working with Sagittarian energy more, you're going to be noticing you're opening up more. You're feeling more of the that direct action and you're feeling more of that like, <sighs> I can breathe action. The second half of November is going to be feel much lighter for Aries. Then I also had a little message. I'll start shuffling my cards. I was having a cup of tea the other night. You know how tea bags... They have the little tags anymore, not all the brands, but, and they'll have a little quote and they're very cute and very spiritual and like new agey and very like trite, I often find. And the tag that I had the other night was, you don't need love, you are love. And immediately I was like, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think that is like the shadow side of spirituality. I get what they're saying, but here's what I think. You are love and you need love and i was really and immediately i thought of aries i thought this is an aries thing that we can talk about because yeah you are love and you can always come back to love and you can always come back to the divine and it is important to know how to cultivate that in yourself and feel that in yourself on a typical day right seven of pentacles yeah yeah we're closing out mars retrograde and mercury retrograde there's some review going on this month. Yeah, you can always come back to you are love. But here's the thing, we're humans. We're in this human experience. We're in bodies, we're in communities, we're social beings. We also need love. We also need somebody to just come and hold us sometimes. Show us that love that we are internally, externally. You know, healing happens partially alone and partially with others. 
And I don't think it's wrong to need, to want love. It's like that tag is just somehow saying, oh, like, why, why are you saying you need love? Like, you just are love. You're just this spiritual being. It's and both. Both and. Two cards came out. Two of Cups and the Page of Wands. Aw. It's nice, Aries. And I just think that that's an important message. That's a message that, for me personally, wanted to come through. And the Emperor. Ooh. All right. You're coming back to yourselves. And I do think, I do think that this Mars work has been hard for Aries. The cardinal signs in general have just been going through some big transformations. You know, we've had all this energy in Capricorn the last year and more, honestly. We've had <laughs> Mars working through Aries uh, and all of this energy has just been asking some big questions of cardinal signs. And what I see here in this month is, yeah, the first couple of weeks, you're going to be finishing up some of those lessons around relationship, around healing when it comes to you feeling you have to be perfect all the time, that you have to be on the go all the time, that in order for you to be allowed to love, you've got to have like this perfect concoction of actions. That's the seven of pentacles here, right? That's that review time, taking a breath, taking a moment, shedding that skin, reviewing. And I would say with this energy coming through, especially the first two weeks of the month, right? Take some time to give yourself credit for what you have learned, what you have gained, what you have understood, what you have come to know about your process. Give yourself credit for everything you've done since early June. And really just come home to all of that. I think it's so important. You know, Seven of Pentacles is also you know, whatever you've learned during the Mercury retrogrades we've had and the Mars retrograde we had and the Venus retrograde we had earlier this year, whatever you have learned, there's probably a kernel of wisdom in there about what you feel you have to keep picking up, what you feel you have to keep doing and what, and, and it, do you really have to keep picking it up? Do you really have to keep doing it the same way? No. And it's also a great time to just acknowledge that. You really don't have to be doing everything. You really don't have to be in warrior mode for every single thing. You really don't. You can choose when you wanna activate that Aries power into things that really fill you up. And that's the next three cards. You know, I'm getting a lot of chills talking about November, like more than usual for a month. I'm honestly kind of like right now I'm having full body chills. There is something big shifting in November, like big, and it is really cool. I think it's the first month for me, I can honestly say that there is going to be a bigger understanding of what we've gotten out of the last seven, eight, nine months. For you all, look at this. What I see here is empowerment. I see you coming back with all your beautiful Aries fire, all your beautiful Aries integrity, you know, that's not been stripped from you because you've had to go see a deep internal. But with this kind of integrity, with this kind of loving softness and also openness and also purpose, that is so beautiful. And for those of you who have felt like maybe this is just, maybe I'll never fully come back to the brightness that I consider myself. Maybe I'll never fully come back to like my most empowered self. Maybe this is just, this is just how it's going to be from now on. I'm going to have to, you know, dig through the trenches. Maybe I won't get to be in that playful light place again. I think this month is going to start showing you the embers and the, the first sparks of light when it comes to coming back to just, I think, like your inherent, fun, playful, lighthearted, and focused Aries energy that I love so much about you. That I think all this work and all this reflection, yes, it's asked you to really look hard at, you know, what love means to you, what you think of as your, your value and how you value yourself. Do you value yourself? Where do you feel challenged in that regard? It's asked some deep questions of you, but it hasn't asked you to strip away those beautiful qualities of yourself. And, and you're getting to experience and witness them again. Yes, there's connection here. 
Yes, there's romance here. Yes, there's harmony here. Yes, there's give and receive, right? And this doesn't just have to be with relationships. I think Two of Cups is such an ooey gooey juicy energy because it is all about um, give and receive in the work you do in the world, in the creative process, in relationships, in family, and in that dynamic you have with the world. You know, we're always in communication with our soul, with the world. It's a conversation. It's not a one-way street. And when you have Two of Cups energy activated, you feel more in that flow. You know, one partner takes a step, the other partner takes a step, and there's this flow with it. Page of Wands and the Emperor also speak to new beginnings, to new sparks of light, to new creative endeavors. You know, the Emperor is associated with fatherhood. So, <laughs> you know, not to get too graphic, but you know, with seeding new things, new projects, initiating, making things happening. And in, on leadership, right? This is very empowered energy. And the Page of Wands is all about being a beginner, trying new things, going for it, having that kind of spring in your step. And so Aries, you're allowed to come back to that place. Um, the world is gonna continue to have some pretty heavy hitting energy in November and December and January, I'll be real. It's not gonna just magically be like, a chill time where there's not much going on in the world there's gonna be a lot going on in the world but you are coming back home to yourself so i am loving seeing this i'm just so i am honestly i have to admit i'm very excited for mars stationing direct and for the last six or seven weeks of 2020 to be mars direct in aries that is gonna be some great energy and many of us need that fiery boost um, to get back into get back into the saddle, you know, and you guys especially. And I'm going to pull one final card from the Animal Totem Tarot. I love this deck so much. It's so beautiful. If you love nature and animals, highly recommend. We're going to pull one card and we're going to read the message that comes with it. I haven't used this deck since the beginning of 2020, actually. So coming back around to it for me feels really appropriate. Card. I want to come out. Ace of Pentacles. That is beautiful. It's a beetle. So let's read about the Ace of Pentacles. I've got to like swim, <laughs> uh, move through my book here to get to the <laughs> to the right page. Sorry, you guys. Nine of Swords. Uh, let's see here. Of course, Pentacles is going to be the last. Yeah, the last page, the last chapter. Okay, so the Dung Beetle. Yeah. <laughs> Very romantic, you all. You like that dung beetle? <laughs> Let's see what the dung beetle's message is in this deck. Everything in the physical material world operates in a cycle of reincarnation. That which is past its usefulness for one person becomes the most coveted resource to another. We all require different things at different times. So be open to where that resource can come from. Waste not, want not is my personal motto. If you know how to be open-minded, it will be yours as well. Yeah, I really love that. It's true, the dung beetle and the beetle in general, the scarab, they're all very tied to um, reincarnation, regeneration, rebirth, coming up from the mud, coming up from the underworld, um, and there being you know, timing and value and what it is that we have and the treasures we have in our life. and. I do feel like you all are coming through a reincarnation process, a rebirth process during the month of November and coming out into the sun. And, you know, I love the message of this dung beetle as well, because it's like, I think Ace of Pentacles, it, it, it does tie into like, you know, what we value, what we are grateful for, what we, when we work with what we have, it expands, it grows. There isn't lack there, there's abundance there. So even if you're just working with very tiny wisps of an idea or um, very small steps when it comes to like maybe getting back into physical shape and like connecting with your body or a creative project or connecting or building new connections or building a new skill set, you start with those little pieces and they expand and they grow. And I think you may be feeling kind of like you're taking those toddler steps to be back in your full area self, but there is a sense of regeneration here. There is a sense of coming back to full life and feeling a full breath of air again. 
and I love that for Aries. Um, we are going to be going deep. We're going to be finishing up this Mars retrograde strong over on my Patreon. So if you're looking for guidance, you're wanting some worksheets and some rituals and some ways to connect you to the divine energy of that Mars stationing direct and all that's going on in November, including the full and new moons. We have a lot coming up in November. I'd love to see you over there. It's an amazing community of support. You can also find me on my website and on Instagram at Sarah Verba. So I will leave all those links below so you can find me. Please subscribe and hang out with me. I love having you guys here. It means the world to me. I want to do more and I want to be here more in the coming months. So I'm looking forward to that. You can also find out so much more about my personal journey on Patreon. That's where I tell people like what I'm doing as just my own person. So if you're like curious to hear some personal anecdotes, that's where you can hear those. You can also find Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry on her Etsy shop. I love you all so much. I'm so excited for the message that came through today, Aries. And I will see you all in December for more wild, <laughs> energetic shifts. Sending you all my love, beautiful beings.